Unit 4, Lesson 8, The Russian Revolution. Unit 4, Lesson 8, Vocabulary. So the Russian government before the revolution, well, it was controlled by a czar. This was a form of monarchy. And until 1905, the czar's powers were unlimited. Russia had no constitution, uh, no working political parties, no sense of voting. And the czar had a strong secret police that terrorized the people and forced their loyalty to the czar. Czar Nicholas II and his family. Uh, Nicholas II was the last czar of Russia. He was a harsh ruler, um, primarily because he was weak. The Russian economy was bankrupt because of the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 and 1905. And then it became further bankrupted because of World War I and all the expenditures for the war efforts between the Russo-Japanese War and then 10 years later, World War I. This completely bankrupted the Russian economy. The Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905 was a dispute over Manchuria in mainland China with Japan. Japan won the war, and then it wanted more throughout the next coming decades, the 1920s and 1930s. This shook the national confidence of Russia in both their progress uh, and their rule of the Tsar. Tsar Nicholas looked weak. Russia looked weak. Uh, this began the feelings of revolution. The revolutionary feelings started boiling over amongst the citizens. On January 22, 1905, a group of workers led by the Latical priest Grigory Apoyonovich Capone marched to the Tsar's Winter Palace in St. Petersburg to make their demands to make their demands known. Imperial forces opened fire on, on the demonstrators, killing and wounded hundreds. This event became known as Bloody Sunday throughout Russian history. Russia was Germany's eastern front, and they, Russia suffered early losses at the Battle of Tannenberg. Throughout the country, the war was wildly unpopular. The war effort led to a rationing of food amongst Russians. This rationing of food meant most of the country's supplies went towards the war effort and soldiers. This caused many Russian citizens to um, fall under starvation. Conditions were so bad, Nicholas II left St. Petersburg to lead the war effort from the front line. This left his wife, Alexandra, at home under the influence of a strange man named Grigory Rasputin. Rasputin was a self-proclaimed holy man or mystic who advised the royal family. This was Grigory Rasputin. In 1917, protests spread throughout St. Petersburg, and the royal palace was taken over. Tsar Nicholas, who had long left St. Petersburg to help with the war effort, had abdicated his throne. So a provincial government, Duma, took over, led by Alexander Kerensky. The provincial government decided at the time to stay engaged in World War I and they became wildly unpopular with Russian citizens. This led to the second revolution in 1917, the Bolshevik Revolution, led by Vladimir Lenin, who was popular with the peasants, promising peace, bread, and land. This began a civil war in Russia that lasted approximately six years. The Bolshevik Revolution, led by Vladimir Lenin, ultimately overturned the provisional government and created the Soviet Union in 1922. The civil war was between the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. Shortly after taking control, the Bolshevik, after the Bolshevik Revolution, Vladimir Lenin and Russia signed the Treaty of Brest-Litvix, where Russia officially enters a peace deal with the Central Powers ending their participation in World War I. 
ending the war for Russia. This map shows, as of 1919, the warring factions within Russia in the Russian Civil Wars, with the White Armies, the Royal Menshevik troops, attacking the Red Armies from all directions. The Far Eastern Front in Siberia was particularly nasty, but in 1920 the Bolsheviks ultimately win an attempt to unify Russia as the United or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. 1920. The casualty numbers in the Civil War were staggering. After losing so many men and so many soldiers and civilians in World War I, these Russian Civil Wars led to almost 10 million deaths. Most died of starvation or typhus, with 3 million dying of typhus in 1920 alone, and over 6 million dying of starvation between 1920 and 1921. After the civil wars ended, after the revolutions ended, we have a four-year period with the rule of Vladimir Lenin of the USSR. There were numerous economic reforms that included in his new economic policy of 1921, which created a sort of a moderate mix of capitalism and socialism, where individuals could own small properties, but the government would run banks, control trade, and control large industries and manufacturing. It's important to note that Lenin instituted a form of communism, uh, which is a form of socialism in and of itself, with the central planning of the economy done by the state government, where the government makes decisions on individual jobs and pay for all the citizens, trying to find a balance with equity and equality. Vladimir Lenin, champion of the people, dies in 1924. This leaves a power vacuum with no clear successor set up to take power. You have two competing factions, Leon Trotsky and Joseph Stalin, both wanting power over the Soviet Union. Joseph Stalin takes control. So now he has to decide how he will maintain power. He does so, Stalin. He decides to create a totalitarian state to control all of the Soviet Union. Characteristics of a totalitarian state are it's a dictatorship. Okay? It's a type of dictatorship where one person has absolute authority. Uh, they're usually a dynamic leader. They have a vision for the nation, but they do so with dubious methods. Right? Um, Stalin had control over all sectors of society, businesses, family life, labor, youth groups, housing, religion, education, even the arts. There was state control over individuals. Uh, individuals were forced to be obedient to the state and they were denied their basic liberties. Totalitarian states also used organized violence. It was used to crush their opposition, used to crush their opponents into submission. Stalin's totalitarian state in the Soviet Union, so he took state control of the economy with what he called a five-year plan um, to bring the country out of starvation, to bring them out of relative bank bankruptcy. This was a five-year plan which included collective farming for the good of the state. Stalin also had a lot of problems policing his citizens. Okay, they had the Great Purge where Stalin wrangled up tens of millions of citizens on his watch and sent them to the Gulag to work camps, to prisons in Siberia. Siberian work camps were notorious for their harsh conditions, with many of the inmates dying within weeks. Stalin also wanted to control the individual by way of religious persecution and by propaganda machines. This was like a form of socialist realism where they were hoping to mold people's minds to serve the greater good, which was the Soviet Union. And how do you do that most effectively? You control the education of children. By controlling the education, so education is controlled by the government, and having propaganda machines turn out pro-Soviet Union, pro-war, pro-nationalism messages, pro-communism messages, you're controlling 
everything about the early education of children and molding their minds. And then with the religious persecution, you're maintaining how people can be religious, how they can be spiritual. You're controlling the minds, hearts, and souls of the citizens.